Let me just talk to everybody who's uh, tuning in. So my name is Ryan Kingsline. I'm uh, one of the founders of Game Art Institute, UArts, the ZBrush Workshops Concept Art Workshop. I have with me Niles. Niles, how do I say your last name? Uh, Rouse. <laughs> What's that? Give that a try. Rouse. Rouse. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. So um, uh, I met Niles through um, the class, at Adam Scott's class that he took, and um, he just had some amazing work. So I wanted to kind of walk you through kind of his journey, some of his work, and some of the process uh, that he goes through, and, um, and just kind of talk about the journey of, of developing yourself as a character artist you know, along the way. So um, thank you, Niles, for joining me, for uh, taking the time out to be here. I know it's late over there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it's what? only off the side. <laughs> ah, uh, well, that's right. That's it's right. fine. Yeah. So tell me, um, where are you working now? We'll start out there. Um, I'm at Moving Picture Company, mm -hmm. NPC, here in London. So uh, I, I made the jump from games to film. That's great. That's Just awesome. About two and a half months ago. <laughs> yeah, and so what yeah, did you? Good. Where were you working before when you were in games? Uh, so before making the switch, I was at uh, Jagex mm -hmm. working on the old RuneScape game. Yeah. Um, uh, as a character artist, and before that, I was an environment artist at Gorilla in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. uh, and before that, I was a character artist at Triumph Studios back in the Netherlands. Yeah. So that was my first job. That's great. And what, um, what, how did you do the transition from environment to character? Um, so I, I started off as a, as a character artist. Um, mm. And basically what I did back then was sort of quite close to what they were doing at, uh, at Jagex at that point. Uh, so I just saw an opening to, to move back to characters uh, and took it. Yeah. Um, I liked it because it, it, it's it was a lot of hand painting stuff, which which I quite like yeah. at times. Um, so I sort of meander back and forth between like very stylized and very realistic stuff. Yeah. Um, currently at MPC, we're all the way realistic again. So. <laughs> okay. Great. All right, so why don't we just, um, for those people who are just tuning in and really want to get a sense of things, what is it that your day job looks like? If you could give me a sense of that. And then we're going to kind of jump into your work and some of your process. But what does a character artist do in the beginning? Um, so at the moment, I have to keep this a little bit vague since sure. I'm not really allowed to talk about the project. But yeah. um, I basically make um, concept sculpts for a new show MPC is working on, mm -hmm. uh, which we then, after that, prepare to go to Groom. So after the, the concept sculpt, where you basically combine everything, like the skin, the fur, yada, yada, all, all that together. Um, when that's approved, which can take quite some time, uh, we sculpt the anatomy model, where, where it should um, be spot on, but without any of the fur. And then we kick that off to to the grooming department in film. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's basically my job, which I do for for a pretty exciting movie, which uh, I did not see happening a few a few months back. <laughs> that's great. But it happened, and it's good. Yeah, it's it's really fun. Um, so yeah, um, you're doing concept sculpts, which is yes. um, basically it's a high polygon. Uh, sculpt, right? Like a design sculpt. Yes. Yes. In, any different than what you would do in games, or the same thing in games, where you just you you do the highest quality, highest level, and then you worry about the production side later. Um, it can at that stage be a bit rougher, since nothing of that will be reused. Basically, it's mm. it's all about the proportions and more like the 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 feeling of yeah. the sculpt. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say it's exactly the same because I don't have to think, okay, I'm going to have to bake a normal map out of this at a later stage, or, you know, I'm going to model it this in a certain way because I need room for deformation, right. that stuff. Um, that basically comes a step later. So the first step is quite, um, I wouldn't say quick and dirty. It's more, it's more, you're a bit more free to do what, what you, what you want. Yeah. Uh, now the trick is that, um, and what I found the biggest difference between games and film is the, um, the feedback loop in film. It's almost constant. 
and there will be people telling you what they want and and they will change their minds as well um but you basically have to present all the time now the nicest thing obviously is if you can model and sculpt in in a in a basic t-pose um but that's not always the case sometimes they want it post up so you have to be a bit fluent in what you're doing your in your concept sculpt mm-hmm. um yeah, so it has it, it has a, sl- a few slight differences between what we used to do in games. Yeah, um, but not too many differences. Okay, great. So um, let's take a look at your work, and I want to talk about process and have see if you can kind of explain and maybe help somebody who's who's going through this journey as well. Um, what it is that you really have to do, and what you have to be committed um, to doing. You know, kind of one of my goals in this is to is to really get in and start to um, dispel some of the illusions that people have about what you have to do and say how long something takes and, you know, how much you have to do by yourself versus, you know, maybe later on you're a part of a team so you can have a weakness here that somebody else is going to pick up, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah. I'll I'll try to be of use. Yeah. Good. (laughs) All right. So, um, on the screen over here, I've got your uh, your art station. So if anybody wants to know, yeah. uh, you can just head over here. You can look at the the URL art station artists, and you just get all of that stuff there. And uh, this character right here that I'm opening up, this is the one that you did for Adam Scutt's class over at Game Art Institute, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's correct. And uh, so this character, I think I've got a more recent render of it. Why don't we start out with the question that everybody asks, which is, how much time do you spend on something like this, right? Because everybody asks that, and they're like, oh, my God, how much time? And if you tell them you spent an eternity, they still want to know how much time. But, you know, literally, give me a sense of, of how you quantify time for something like this. Um, so I basically did this next to my job at Jagex. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for about three months, I spent about three to four hours, five days a week on this particular model. I'm doing the math. Uh, I tried it for seven days at the at the first week, and then I, I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, so three hours, three hours, five days for essentially 12 weeks, basically, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. that's, uh, or wait, it was during the course, it would have been 10 weeks. Yeah, but I I took a little bit more time okay. <laughs> at the end. Yeah, it doesn't everybody, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. that is 15 times 12. That's uh, 180 hours. And um, I believe you there. Okay, and if we divide that back into 40 so that we say what it takes, that's basically four and a half weeks full-time labor on the project. Yeah. That resonates with you? Uh, yeah, I basically this the whole Adam Scott course for me was like an exercise in learning to actually finish a project and and polish it. Yeah. And um, as you can see, that model has quite some you know bags and and um, swords and whatnot hanging from them. And that was a bit of a balance for me because everything I added, I had to force myself to actually get it to a standard where it wouldn't drag the rest of the model down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it was it was quite some time. Um, I I must say it, it got really, really difficult by the end. Um, yeah, I want to preface this too because... The other part of this in terms of how much time somebody spends is um, how much time they spend doing the different tasks, right? Mm-hmm. And so within the first week, how far did it, how long did it take you to get to that? Uh, I think that was by the end of the first week. Yeah. I think. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you've already got the face, mm-hmm. you've already got the body, you've already got like a block in of clothing and a block in of boots. So we're talking yeah. at this point, maybe 15 hours of work and something like that. Yeah. After that. So that's that first 15 hours. There's literally another 130 plus hours of work that has to go into this. 
Yep. That I, that's it's a really powerful thing that I think um, a lot of us miss because a lot of us might think that, you know, our primary thing is we get the face and, you know, then we get the body and, and whatnot. But these are just some of the things, like, and it's just a tiny bit of it. So if we walk through some of this um, process, I've got a folder full of stuff here. So at some point, we're here at that 15-hour mark, and then boom. This isn't the next, yeah. but this is like, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> there's a lot. I, I think this was pretty far by the end of the, uh, of the course. I think this was week seven, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I took a few weeks after to, to basically finish the texturing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was the sculpt done. Um, going through, yeah, basically detailing everything. So the first thing you showed just before this one, that was basically my concept mm -hmm. um, or my block out. Can't say, you can't call that a concept skull, but um, I was basically trying to look at um, concept art from from the Witcher games and, you know, other other kinds of inspiration. And I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do all this layering mm -hmm. because that always really attracted um, attracted me in, in um, see the project rats art how, what, do you mean how by, nice it what do you mean by layering the layering of all the clothing so you have like all these pieces of garments that basically sit on top of each other and still feel like a like a hole yeah um so I, that that was basically what i really wanted to try and achieve with this uh with this piece um without making it look like a like a messy freak show yeah um so i was during that first stage, I, I spent a lot of time trying to get the likeness. Um, and and then I was trying to figure out how those clothes would start layering. Mm -hmm. uh, because I didn't want to have to think that out in Marvelous Designer. Because, you know, making a small change or just flipping some layers around in, in Marvelous will take you several hours, which I didn't have. Mm. So where did you figure it out, if not Marvelous? Uh, in that first block out, I've uh, I've spent a considerable amount of time trying to get the um, yeah basically do the concepting the concepting stage yeah. to a point where I was happy with it and where I decided okay he's gonna have this amount of jackets on like this guy is basically wearing enough clothes to survive the North Pole um, yes. and. Um, yeah, I basically want to think that out before actually starting to build them for real. Um, most of these pieces were at least started in Marvelous Designer to get a bit of the folds uh, going, mm -hmm. and that's what you see in that in yeah in that image um, is where I where I started to actually build it. Okay, <clears throat> so this one here that we're looking at, this is Marvelous. Yes. Okay. Uh, partially. Partially, right. Um, so the the garment in there uh, I built in in Marvelous, um, and then I had all kinds of different models to try and influence the the, the creases in there. Mm -hmm. I tried to mimic like his his uh, sword belts and and the bags and the and his uh, belt buckle and things like that. Yeah. Um, to get like a good base, even though I then remodeled all of that, um, all of the uh, accessories. Um, so yeah, I, I want to have like a clean starting point to start sculpting on. Got and it. that's basically what you see there. Yeah. About when? This was about week what? Uh, week four, week five? Uh, Do you remember? No, I think it was a bit earlier. I think it was week three, something like that. Okay. Um, but by then I had everything thought out or, you know, everything. I had quite a bit thought out. I had stuff layered, so I had my marvelous base. And I was just adding the details that, that I had in my mind that I wanted to add. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I I think I got a bit zealous there as well. I, I was already, you know, detailing up the chainmail arm and, and things like that. Um, I was having a bit of fun with it as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you're working at Jagex, you're building this model. And um, mm. 
you're you're putting about 150 hours, like basically a month of full time work into this. You know, what was the payoff? Like, what did this model help you do as uh, an artist and in your career? Well, you can probably see it if you look at my art station. Like before this, I I was quite good at starting projects and never really finishing them. Like get to a to a certain point and then never bother to actually nicely present them, nicely polish them up, texture them. Um, so this project was basically me telling myself to actually get my get my act together and and get something that I could be proud of. Um, and that paid off because I, I I've been talking with recruiters at at times or you know with companies and the thing that always came back was that they wanted to see something really high detailed really nicely wrapped up um, and I did this and I had a job at MPC within a few weeks so wow. I, I in my mind it paid off <laughs> yeah more than I thought it ever would so yeah. yeah. Huh. That's great. Uh, well, that works. So yeah, yeah, I can see it. You can see the difference um, in the models. Like, and it's this is great. Like, I love this model. I love all this the the work in this. This is really fantastic. And uh, Thank you, let's go back here. And uh, and then these guys they have they have elements. And this has some anatomy you're pushing through this has some of those same chains and those same layers and i've noticed and correct me if i'm wrong or you know feel free to put your input in here but i've noticed that really the difference between this model and your most recent model um it's almost entirely a function of time um yeah i don't think it's a function of okay i got to go take another anatomy class and you know i got to go it's just like I'm telling my students now, it's you have to grind on the model and grind. On I think it. it's it's um, self discipline is a big part hmm. because um, it, it's so easy to at some point just call something done, which I've done so often. Yeah. Um, but usually by the time you feel like you're done, you have to spend so much more time to actually make it good. Um, and I still find that hard. Even at work, when when I think something is done, um, I will literally have to force myself to spend another afternoon just detailing, just continuing, continuing, continuing. And even then, sometimes I will still have to do another pause afterwards because, um, yeah, it's it's sometimes you just need to to spend the time. Uh, I personally always find it really hard to then spend the time to make presentation shots like this. Um, you know, it doesn't just end at m making the thing. You also have to take the time to then texture it and to then present it and to then try and sort of sell it in a way. Yeah, yeah. And th you have to do that every day now, right? You were saying you were talking about dailies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, luckily, a big part of that is automated, so okay. I, I just prepared a model, but, uh, you know, some people that know everything about rendering will then take over for me. Yeah. Um, but you still have to, you know, you have to go through that and make sure it looks good. Um, because that's actually something I've been learning over the last few weeks, that you can show something, but if it's, if you would just post it a little bit, it will already make such a different impact on someone who will critique it. Yeah. Um, I always thought that you know people can look through that typos, right? Yeah. Uh, and they can, but they they shouldn't have to always. Sometimes it's better to see something with just that little bit more added to it, mm. um, because it enhances your model. That's great. So, what kind of like how do you put the discipline in so that you are um are adding that extra layer you know what have you changed before you used to call it done now you put an extra afternoon into it what have you changed or what's been something that could help somebody else with the same issue um i think for me it was the realization working on this uh hearing from other people that what i was doing was was pretty okay mm -hmm. you know that realization that i could sort of kick back a little bit and just focus on getting it good yeah because i would always be so nervous i would be like i need to be better i need to be better i need to 
finish stuff so I can go to the next thing, so I can show people that I'm making stuff. Uh, but then I realized that you only need one good piece. Um, I I got the job at MPC on this model only. They probably looked at the other stuff when I wasn't in the room, but uh, during my interview, they didn't even bother opening any of the other uh, images. Oh. Um, yeah, it surprised me, but you know, if you have one good piece, that will tell you as much as if you have 15 good pieces, because, you know, where's the point in that? Yeah. Now, I would still like to have some more of them, of course, but yes. um, I think yeah. that's that realization that I could take the time uh, and try to do the best thing I could, that yeah. was a big win for me, because yeah. I still use it every day. Yeah, that's great. That's amazing. So um, if I was to... Uh, paraphrase that a little bit, one of the biggest issues would be not concerning yourself with get this done, get this done, and time and, you know, having that breathe down your, your neck, but really focus on getting it done well. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, silly and logical as that sounds, that for me personally, that was a big thing that kept coming back. I, I remember a few years back being really proud that I could finish a character in two days. Mm -hmm. But that's nothing to be proud of because uh, if you would spend five days or 25, your character will be way better. Um, you will have enough jobs where you will have to do it in two days. And, you know, you can practice that then, but that 25 day one will probably get you that job. Yeah, I think that's more worthwhile, especially if you have the luxury, like uh, if if you already have a job or if you're still studying, I think it's really, it's a good skill to learn and a good thing to realize because people told me this, but you have to sort of figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's ingrained in us to push, to get something complete. We just feel like that. And I think um, I was listening to this TED talk. Uh, um by uh, the Khan, the founder of Khan Academy. And he was talking about how in traditional schools, they always move on to the next thing. It's you do the, your work here, they do your test, and then no matter what, you move on to the next one. Even if you're failing, they still move on, and then you're failing, and then they move on, and you're failing, and you move on. And then eventually somebody says, well, math's not my thing. And, you know, they, it's, they just get this feeling that you know they can't do it because nobody ever took the time for them to just stop master that first thing that you've got to do right get that yep. first thing done and so i can see in this model like somebody could come through as they're working on a model and just be like okay i'm done with this jacket i'm done with this you know trench coat piece and okay this is enough time on that pouch but you took time for each one of these elements that pouch looks great the gauntlet looks great. The um, the the uh, little strings in between there are pulling, and there's appropriate tension. Mm. Every section is being done with incredible craftsmanship. And um, it it takes a certain mindset because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, I I still have it. I I mean. I spent a little bit less time on personal projects these days because work takes up a lot of time. Yeah. But I still find myself starting a project and then already eyeing the next thing I want to do, the next thing I want to spend time on. And then I, so I'm, I still have to hold myself back and say, no, no, no. How about you finish this first and make it good? Yeah. Because otherwise you might spend 20 hours on something and then you abandon it or you call a day, uh, call the day and um, that 20 hours that won't matter because people look at it and be like, yeah, there's enough good art. I don't have to look at this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. All right, man. Thank you so much for joining and sharing this. It's, um, you know, it's just, it's just crazy work actually. Um, one of the, uh, one of the heads over at, uh, Pixelogic was even commenting to Travis about how awesome this was. So, wow. Yeah, it was really neat. That's good. So um, any last words for people who are wanting to get into this and, you know, maybe they've been trying for a while and they're just, you know, maybe they've been doing the same thing where they're pushing, trying to get stuff done in two days or five days, you know, whatever. But any words for people um, of encouragement who are still trying to do this and still a little stuck? I would try to just 
finish something. Now, don't try to do what I did with this thing and take too much on your plate because I, I've cursed myself several times while working on this. Like, why did you have to add all these bags, man? Why did he has to have this fur on this? But, you know, you don't need to do all that, but finish something and try to finish it to the best of your capabilities because you will learn more and you will gain more from that than, you know, brushing something and, and going to the next thing, thinking that more models will be better. Yeah. I think that's when I learned that, I think, my my skill as an artist went up yeah quite a bit that's awesome how was that yeah yeah no that makes um, a lot of sense and then try to learn from other people i uh during during this class i had some quite cool people comment on this model all the time hmm. um and that was really beneficial it's it's a good thing to learn from other people that's great do it all right. Well, thank you so much for, for joining, for sharing. and um, You're very welcome. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. Have a fantastic night, and, uh, and you know, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, thank you very much. All Have right. a good day. You too, and everybody okay. else who's joined us here, you know where to find our friend over at ArtStation, right? You can hit him up over at LinkedIn, um, and then uh, he's also here uh, at his own website. And... Um, you know, make sure that you follow him, friend him, and uh, connect with him, and uh, get to know more about his process and all of that good stuff. And I'll talk with yeah. you all later. Have a fantastic uh, day. See you, my friend.